I have the one and only James Pankiewicz, the man, the myth, the legend, the founder of the Dojo Bar here in Naha, Okinawa. And right now we are one floor above the Dojo Bar, it's actually right below us. And um, I would like to interview Jameson for you so you can get some insights into what it's like to live, uh, train and work here in the birthplace of karate. So, welcome James. Thank you Jesse, greetings everybody. <coughs> uh, let's start off, uh, let's start from the beginning. So, how did you first come to Okinawa and why? Um, well, um, my first experience in Japan was as a student and it wasn't in Okinawa. I went up into the mainland to study karate and Japanese. Um, but, while I was there at university in the mainland, I met a beautiful Okinawan girl who then became my wife later on. Um, so, two things brought me down to Okinawa. Yeah. Obviously, uh, the love of karate, but also I was very lucky to, to uh, find myself a lovely Okinawan wife, yeah. and so that's how I ended up living here. Mm. And did you immediately start to practice karate in Okinawa, or did you discover that later on? Um, to be honest, it took me a few visits to Okinawa before I started to meet uh, local karate teachers yeah. and, and find the opportunities to, to train with them and to get to know them. Yeah. Um, the first time that I came to Okinawa, of course, I went to Shiredo, the famous karate store. Yeah. Um, and um, every time I came to Okinawa, which was every year, yeah. um, I would visit the karate store and sometimes you'd meet people there. Uh, yeah. And sometimes from those meetings, I would then get a chance to go and train. Um, but it took a little bit of time to develop um, say local connections yeah. and introductions to go and train uh, in dojos here. Yeah. Um, I, um, I, I didn't really sort of search out the strongest dojo that I could find or, no. or the most famous teacher. No. Uh, but I ended up training with some, some very special people. Yeah. And before you started practicing karate in Okinawa, you practiced something else, right? Not Okinawan karate, but Japanese. Karate. That's right. Uh, when I was about 18 years old, um, I started training Wadori uh, with Arthur Meek Sensei back in my hometown, Bridgewater in, in England. Um, I was very lucky um, to, to meet uh, Arthur Meek Sensei. He had also trained in Japan. Okay. Um, he'd been to the Hombu Dojo in Tokyo. And I think his stories of that experience were what inspired me to want to follow his path and go yeah. to Japan myself. Yeah. And how, was there any, uh, did you face any problems as a Japanese style Wadoryu practitioner trying to uh, practice Okinawan karate? Um, well, no, I, I wouldn't say any problems because I decided that I needed to um, go in completely open, yeah. open mind uh, and just learn, just listen and learn and yeah. practice. So I really, I put away um, any ideas that, of what I'd achieved in, in Wadoryu. Yeah. Um, I'd got to showdown in Wadoryu. Yeah. But I, I put on a white belt and I just started training like a beginner yeah. here in the dojos. And um, I think that's really the only way that you can come here and really um, benefit the most. Yeah. Did you know that Okinawan karate was different from Japanese karate? Or did you think that all karate was the same when you came here? Um, no, I had an idea that, that there was a lot of different karate in Okinawa. Yeah. I'd seen a few different styles and they seemed quite different. Yeah. So it was clear to me that um, there, were, there were teachers who were teaching uh, quite unique things um, and there were some very distinct styles in Okinawa. Yeah. Um, I thought some of them might be similar to right. what I'd done before and yeah. that was true. As mm -hmm. I went from Wairoryu to Shorinu, yeah. which has the, you know, the same lineage. Mm -hmm. um, so that did help. Um, but uh, I wasn't, you know, I didn't know ex exactly what to expect, so I no. just tried to, you know, be flexible mm -hmm. and um, really just absorb everything that was being shown to me. Yeah. And how would this compare? Like, if you. So today, a lot of foreigners come to Okinawa to mm -hmm. study karate. Yeah. How would you say your journey is similar or different compared to today when people come here? Um, I would say the thing that has changed recently is um, uh, knowledge of Okinawa yeah. in the international karate world and also just the, the ease of getting here has improved. Right. Um, 
now there are more people living in Okinawa who can provide uh, connections and communication and a bridge yeah. to visitors coming here, mm. people like myself. Yeah. Um, and um, there's just more knowledge, I think, about Okinawa because of the internet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, more knowledge of, of Okinawa and its connection and significance with karate. Mm. So um, I would say getting here has maybe got a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, but once you're here, training is still hard. You still face <laughs> the same challenges. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. And so, so speaking of Okinawan karate versus the rest or Japanese mm. karate uh, and Western karate, what would you say are the main differences from your experience? Um, well, it's interesting because, um, for example, uh, most mainland uh, karate dojos have seemed to, seem to have a much stricter etiquette yeah. than the Okinawan dojos. Mm. Things are um, almost often more military-like in discipline, yeah. whereas Okinawan dojos seem sometimes to be ridiculously laid back. Yeah. You know, people are not too worried about all arriving at the same time. No. Um, they're not too worried about exactly where they sit in the dojo when they do seiza and, and bow and ray in and ray out. Yeah. Um, greetings are done in a much more relaxed fashion very often. Right. Sometimes the kids are running around playing yeah. and it doesn't seem to, to, to bother the teacher. Yeah. Um, but actually, um, the, I find that despite the more relaxed attitude, the Okinawans are deadly serious about their karate. Yeah. Um, and I suppose it's my feeling now is because they have this um, kind of deep understanding about the, the value of karate yeah but they don't necessarily need to to and they're a more relaxed kind of people anyway right so they don't necessarily need to put too much etiquette around it no. but you have to understand the difference between being polite and yeah. showing etiquette right yeah you can show etiquette and be impolite okay which sounds strange but it is possible I've seen yeah. people do it right they can have great etiquette but actually yeah. still in their attitude yeah be impolite right yeah you have to be genuinely polite, and um, that that matters. Yeah. Um, and, I think so, and even if you're genuinely polite, maybe they can. Uh, they don't. They're not angry if you don't follow proper etiquette because they can sense that you're trying to be polite anyway. I think the most important thing is that is that you genuinely are trying to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you make mistakes in etiquette, or make mistakes in language, or make mistakes in your karate, if they see that you are trying to improve yourself. Yeah. And you're willing to, to work hard, and you're and you're listening, yeah. and thinking about what they're saying, and trying your best. Right. Then that's what matters. So, what would you say are some of the most common mistakes that you see that foreigners make when they come here and strive to study the art? Well, quite a lot of people come here, unfortunately, with a lot of pride. Yeah. Um, you know, and maybe, rightly so. Maybe they have very good karate. Sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe they've trained for a long time, maybe they haven't, but they just feel that they're particularly young and strong and good at what they do. Yeah. Um, very often they fall into the trap, um, and I've seen this a number of times, where they'll come into a dojo and the Okinawan sensei will welcome them, they'll train together for a little while, the, the sensei will see that they're very proud of their karate, and uh, will ask them to demonstrate a kata. They'll say, show me your karate. And of course, um, that person will do that. Um, they often do it, you know, in the strongest, you know, fashion they can do it. And the Okinawan sensei will say, "Oh, very good. That's it. That's the end of the lesson." Okay. And that person leaves that lesson thinking, "Wow, my karate must be fantastic." Yeah. He had nothing else to teach me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The reality is, very often, that afterwards, when you speak quietly to that sensei, they will say. That person is impossible to teach. Right, because their cup is full. Yeah, yeah. They're not ready to learn. No. Yeah, they've they've come here to prove something to themselves. Yeah. But they've not really come to learn. Right. And I think it's a huge shame. It's it's mm. so disappointing. Right. Because it takes time and effort to come to Okinawa. Yeah, the money. And money, <laughs> yeah. and it's such a great opportunity. Yeah. You're not going to find necessarily, um, if you already have great karate. Yeah. You're not necessarily going to find. Um, a whole other level of karate that's above that, um, which replaces everything you have. Right. But you definitely will find some real gems, yeah. some real pieces of treasure, yeah. which will really help you in your journey. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I find all the time. Right. right? Um, there'll be something you can learn, and, it's, and it was worth it for that. But sometimes you have to listen, you have to kind of dig a little deeper yeah. to get that gem out. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, if you miss that through, you know, really ego. your own fault, ego. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a great shame, right? Yeah, it's I a agree. great shame. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> huh. And you see that with foreigners. I do see it. I mean, yeah. it's it's you know, it's it's not the majority. No. You know, but when you do see it, it just sticks in your mind, right? Because it seems yeah. like such such a shame. Yeah. But I guess it's the same wherever you go. You know, you have to be prepared to be open. Right. And learn. Yeah. Yeah. And probably not prejudge everything. Yeah. Another um, thing I suppose is in Western society that we have a certain ageism, so we don't expect old people yeah. to teach younger people how to be really good at physical sports. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but the truth is, is that the Karate skill and karate, I would, say, I would say, ability and wisdom is something that develops over a lifetime. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I've noticed here in Okinawa is that um, traditional Okinawan karateka tend to be in their prime around 50 years old. Okay. 45, 50, 55, through even 60, 65 years old. Yeah. That's their really strong period in their karate. Okay. They Interesting. Have strong physique. Yeah. They have well honed physical skills. Yeah. But they also have the wisdom and the understanding exactly. that, that underpins all mm. of that. Yeah? Yeah. Um, they have the calmness yeah. you know, that allows them to execute karate in a, in a very controlled and balanced way. Yeah. Yeah? They're not too worried about showing off and impressing people anymore. You yeah. know, they did that when they were younger. Right, right. right. So that's different from a, just a, I suppose, a sports athlete. Right, yeah. You know, who's really trying to, to hit their peak early and exactly. quick. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, before they feel their, their physical skills start to suck. Yeah, yeah. But then they don't reach that level of maturity that the Okinawan Exactly, have. exactly. Yeah. I mean, you do see it sometimes in other things. Like, um, I was watching something the other day where there was a boxer. Yeah. A Cuban boxer. He was a boxing coach. He was an older fellow. He was probably in his 60s. Right. But he was teaching some of the young guys some real lessons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He wasn't as strong or as fast as he probably was when he was younger. But right. He was outboxing them. He was outclassing them. Okay. Right? And you know they were learning lessons the hard way. Yeah. So you know we, we see that we see yeah. that skill. Um, yeah. So I think one of the things when you come to Okinawa is not necessarily to to underestimate right uh, teachers due to maybe the fact that they're older right or smaller than you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> most of them are. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so, so we touched a little bit on that, the sport, yeah. right? Karate as a sport or as a martial art? How is that perceived in Okinawa well, from the masters and by the practitioners as well? Yeah, well, it's interesting because Okinawa is a part of the modern karate world just like everywhere else. Yeah. No. Um, and, um, and now there's an increased focus on sport karate in Japan because of it, its inclusion in the 2020 Olympics yeah. in Tokyo. Um, so. There's a lot of pride and drive and motivation for young karateka in, in Okinawa as well yeah. as the rest of Japan to excel and and represent uh, their country in yeah. the Olympics. Um, so in Okinawa, if you want to find sport karate, you can find sport karate. Yeah. There's some good teachers uh, and there's a lot of competition. If you want traditional karate, you can find that. A lot of the instructors bridge both worlds. Yeah. Um, and um, and, and kind of do quite, a, I think, a good job of managing mm -hmm. those two worlds. Obviously, there, there's overlap. Sure. Um, yeah. And like I say, traditional karate is a lifetime thing. Yeah. Sports karate is pretty much, you know, for younger people in the 20s and 30s yeah. at the most. Yeah, exactly. Um, I think, you know, both uh, objectives contribute to somebody's path in karate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but um, you know, the sport karate is definitely a, a shorter term yeah. thing. On the flip side, though, it's definitely what brings lots of kids yeah. into karate practice. Exactly. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Um, because one of the great concerns in Okinawa was that there weren't enough young karateka coming through okay. to continue uh, and, pres and preserve the art. And yeah. in fact, not preserve, but continue the, f the forward development of Okinawan yeah. karate yeah. Uh, by, by Okinawans. So, mm. um, Actually, I think when I look around the dojos now, I see lots and lots of kids doing karate. Yeah. Um, and now they have some really strong role models in uh, people like Kiyuna, mm. uh, Ryo, and other um, world-class 
Ocina and Karatika. Yeah. Um, so I think that's good. That, that, that yeah. bodes well for the future. Yeah. And even some of the older masters mm. used to compete themselves, right? When oh. they were younger. Most of them did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you speak yeah. to them, you know, while they might say or they might, you know, criticize sport karate in yeah. you know, most of them competed in, yeah. in some way. They did yeah. tournaments or they did, they did whatever kata or, yeah, right. most of them have competed. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And what about the same thing, like there's a divide also between kobudo and karate. Mm. And uh, usually in the Western world you practice sometimes kobudo, but usually it's just karate, empty hand. But here they seem to go more hand in hand. Yes, can absolutely. You, can you describe that, how that works? Well, I think it's just that it's natural here for karate and kobudo to be practiced together. Yeah. Very often in the same class, mm. certainly in the same dojo. Uh, most, most instructors I know in Okinawa practice both karate and kobudo. Yeah. Even if they're famous for one or the other, yeah. they'll practice both. Yeah. And I think since the old times it was just seen as, as um, just you know, two elements of the, of the same skill set, which right. was, you know, in the old days it was bushy. Exactly. You know, the old Okinawan uh, warriors who were, you know, responsible for protecting society, mm -hmm. uh, for keeping the peace. Yeah. You know, they, and they, they, you know, they needed all of the skills to do that, right? Mm. Uh, not just weapon and empty hand skills, but also, um, you know, the wisdom and leadership and communication, mm. the ethics that goes with that. Yeah. Um, so Kobudo, um, I mean, I don't, and it's very hard to separate Kobudo from Karate in Okinawa. Yeah. Um, uh, and I think that's a good thing. It's like the left and right hands, you know, mm. they work together. Right? Exactly. So. Yeah, interesting. And so if a, a foreigner comes to Okinawa, a, a gaijin as they mm. say, what do you think are the most important steps in preparation before arriving here? Um, well, it always pays to do your homework, right? Yeah. To do some research, find out the basics about Okinawa, find out the basics about um, the teachers here. Yeah. Uh, even if you don't know who you're going to be training with, yeah. there's plenty of information on the internet right now, yeah. for example, about the Okinawan associations, some of the leading teachers in Okinawa. Um, it also pays to invest in a little bit of Japanese study. Right. Um, and also Okinawan language study. So mm. the o Japanese language and Okinawan language are, are two different yeah, things. Yeah. Similar but not the same. Yeah. Um, even if you only have a few words by the time you get here, it yeah. will help you. It will yeah. just if you can say please, you know, please and thank you. Yeah. Uh, and, and 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 greet people and say some mm. very simple things. It definitely goes a long way to helping you build relationships with them. Yeah. Again, because they can see that you're trying to learn. You know, exactly. Um, so, do your research. Um, study what you can, there's plenty to find out on the internet. Speak to people. There are plenty mm. of people in Okinawa now um, who um, are available, you can talk to them, um, ask them questions, mm. you know, get some advice, get a few contact points. Yeah. Um, and, um, and, I, and, I, and again, you know, we talked about it at the beginning, but come to Okinawa with an open mind yeah. and an open heart ready to learn. Yeah. Um, and definitely, especially if one's style is mm. not even practiced in Okinawa, mm. then you really have to be open-minded, right? Because Absolutely. maybe some of you guys at home don't know, but like Shotokan or Wadoryu or Shitoryu, these uh, popular Western and Japanese styles, they're very rare here in Okinawa. It's what would you, what, what would you say is the most popular style in Okinawa? Um, I guess based on the numbers. Probably Gojiru. Gojiru. I'm guessing, but yeah. it, it's probably Gojiru and Shorinu are very, very close. I would yeah. think, yeah, in the numbers. But and then Uechiru. Then probably Uechiru. Yeah. And then probably after that, uh, Ryeru. Okay. Yeah. But Ryeru actually maybe has more numbers than Uechiru because it, you know, it's very, very popular these days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Uechiru tends to be a little bit harder. Right. <laughs> for yeah. people to train physically harder. Yeah. 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 Um, but even within Gojiru and Shorinu, there's huge variety. Yeah. So there's there's an enormous uh, variation mm. and variety in, in teacher styles. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, they're, they're just sort of broad groupings. Really. Mm. And, and uh, speaking of that, for example, I've heard mm. a famous Wadoryu sensei tell me that they don't have bunkai in Wadoryu. Mm. Yet in Okinawa, it seems to be very important with bunkai or mm. understanding the purpose of kata. Mm. And today, many modern karate practitioners. Mm perform kata 
as a physical exercise or, yeah. or, or sometimes even a dance mm. or, or a performance art or act or, yeah. or something to compete in. Uh, but in Okinawa, right, the bunkai seems to be more important. Uh, can you speak a little bit about that and how it works? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, well, I kind of find it strange if you're a karateka and you seem and you have no interest in bunkai. Yeah, it's almost like being um, a chef, yeah. a cook, who has no interest in actually cooking food. Yeah, but likes to read the cookbooks. <laughs> right. That doesn't make sense, right? And if, if you yeah. think about it, um, if you only do kata, yeah, and and really have no no desire to actually understand why you're doing what you're doing and, yeah. and what it means and where it originated, yeah. how to use it, then you really are just reading a recipe. Yeah. You might be very, very good at repeating that recipe, yeah. word for word, yeah. perfectly, yeah? Yeah. but you're just reading a recipe. You're not actually getting the end result. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, so people train karate for lots of different reasons, yeah. and it's not invalid to train karate just because you love to do kata performances. Yeah. If that's your thing, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, but you are missing a huge aspect of yeah. what karate is about. Yeah. Um, so for me, and I think from what I see for, for, for most teachers here in Okinawa, it's just natural yeah. that the bunkai is um, a, a strong focus of study in karate. Yeah. Um, you know, when you get to talking to them about it, you know, there's a logical process which says that the, the bunkai preceded the kata. Yeah. And the kata is created from the necessity to record the underlying techniques. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the underlying uh, strategies mm. that allow you to, to execute those techniques successfully. Yeah. Um, so we just got to remember that kata comes from a period before video, obviously. Yeah. Um, certainly many of the people that, that produced kata were illiterate. Yeah. Probably, you know, they didn't have the time or the capability to, to draw these things in pictures and no. make books. So, you know, the kata is, is their record of their fighting knowledge and their fighting ability. Yeah. Um, and I think it's fascinating. Mm. You know, it's fascinating. You, know, yeah. you, you can, if you think about it that way, then surely that would uh, generate curiosity in you yeah. to try and analyze what's been passed down. Yeah, yeah. What would you say are some common misconceptions about Okinawa and training karate here? Since you meet so many, you meet so many people, uh, and they all gather in the dojo bar, yeah, right? Yeah. So you have to see their reaction when they came here, <laughs> and they're like, "Holy shit, this is not what I expected." Um, I s well, I suppose a lot of people are very pleasantly surprised that there is first so much depth in Okinawa karate. Yeah. In terms of there's so much to learn, mm. um, but also that there is a lot more breadth and variety than maybe they they thought. Yeah. So maybe they've learnt one uh, style up to that point. Maybe that's Shotokan. Or yeah. Wadoryu or Shitoryu, those being you know the most popular styles of Kyokushin kai. Yeah. Um, but they come to Okinawa and they find that actually, although there are styles, there are um, lots of very individual teachers yeah. teaching their karate, yeah. even if they're under the same banner. Right. Um, and they all have different knowledge, yeah. um, you know, unique things to teach. Yeah. In Okinawa there are uh, 400 dojos. 400 dojos? 400 dojos in Okinawa. Um, so for such a small place, it's an incredibly rich environment yeah. for learning karate. Yeah. Um, however, at the same time, it can be very hard to find those dojos. Right. Yeah. You know, I've met people. It doesn't happen so much today because um, because of the internet and because of online. But still, sometimes people arrive in Okinawa, maybe just you know fresh. They haven't done any research, and they can walk around for days and not find a dojo. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, and, and I and I guess sometimes. They sort of arrive and think that they'll just see karate everywhere. In big yeah. banners yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Just walk into a people walking yeah. around in dogies, which does happen. So <laughs> right, right. Yeah. But um, so um, so that can happen too sometimes. Mm. Um, people can come and be a little bit disappointed because um, they haven't, you know, done their homework. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, but generally, I find people are very, um, very happily surprised. Yeah. About the depth and range of things they can learn in Okinawa, mm. but also about the welcoming nature. Yeah. Of the um, people. People. Yeah. So there's also, I think, still a, a myth out there, to a large extent, a myth that you can't walk into a dojo in Okinawa without a proper letter of introduction yeah. and you know having done all this through the formal channels. Yeah. That is a good thing to do. Yeah. If you can do that as part of your preparation and, and homework, you should absolutely should. Hmm. However, the truth is is that um, if you are polite and honest and um, prepared to learn and you turn up even without a dogi. Yeah. And you just ask. I think most teachers here will be very welcoming, welcome people in to learn. Yeah. So actually, it's not. Um, you know, the, the doors are more open mm. than, than than I think a lot of people think. Yeah. Mm. yeah. From a personal perspective, uh, what gets you most fired up right now about karate in Okinawa? What makes you excited about being here, training, living, and working? Um. Well. I mean, I feel very, very lucky to yeah. be here at this time uh, and to be able to stay here and, and do what I do. Um, there are um, a... Obviously right now that there are some very famous um, teachers and instructors here um, in the older generation. But actually, a lot of people that I train with are of the younger generation. I include myself in that. Yeah. <laughs> being kind to me. But, you know, I'm talking about people uh, in their 40s and 30s who are coming up through yeah. their karate path, through their karate career, so to speak, and are, and are very, very good karate. And that bodes well. That both gives you actually some really good people to train with, you know, here in Okinawa. Yeah. But also, th those are the future ambassadors. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and uh, leaders and teachers of Okinawa karate. Um, so I think it's great that, 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 that there's, a, there's that generation coming through. Yeah. Um, so I think what I'd like to do is you know, help those guys, those Okinawans, the next generation of Okinawan teachers, go out and, and be those ambassadors to, yeah. to, um, to the world of karate. So I do whatever I can yeah. to, to enable that. Yeah. Um, and uh, mainly that's, you know, that's through friendships. And, mm introductions and, and things like that. Um, mm. I just, you know, I'm very happy just to be here and training karate. Yeah. It's a great place to be. Lovely, yeah. lovely people as you know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, yeah, every day is, is, uh, is a good day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. So we looked at your past, the past, and uh, we looked at the present, mm. and so let's finish with the future. Mm. So what are your hopes and wishes for the future of karate both on an international scale, but mm. also in Okinawa, and especially with uh, considering the Olympic movement and, mm, uh, mm. and all of that. Yeah. Well, I think the thing I hope for the most is that Okinawa will continue to be relevant yeah. in the karate world. So I think there are some areas of opinion. I've heard this. People saying, "Well, Okinawa is just just really a karate museum." Yeah. Now you don't really go there now to learn modern karate or cutting edge karate, you know, you just go there, you see the sights, yeah. you know, you, you shake hands, you take some pictures, right. <laughs> um, you, you've done it, you know, that's yeah. it. Well, I think that's wrong. Yeah. Um, I think Okinawa and the Okinawan karate community here has an enormous amount of uh, significance, an enormous amount to offer every karateka in the world. Yeah. Um, as, I, as I just said, I think I see a good you know, future wave of very knowledgeable um, karate practitioners here. Mm. Um, so, yeah, m my main hope is that is that we will collectively be able to um, continue to make Okinawa very relevant yeah. in the karate world. Yeah. Um, and continue to be a, a sort of a mecca yeah. for karateka around the world. Pilgrimage. Yeah. Because yeah. once you come to Okinawa, I think you learn more than just karate. Right. right. If you come, you train hard, you will hopefully improve your karate, your karate skills, but you mm. also learn about the culture that surrounds yeah. traditional karate. Right. And I think that really helps people to mm. mature in their, in their karate. Yeah, both inside and outside of the Absolutely, dojo. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah.
All right. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much, James Sun, for this uh, insightful interview. I'll see you guys next week.